The Ben Heck Show is brought to you by Element 14, the electronic design community where you can connect and collaborate with top engineers from around the world. Join now at element14.com. Hello and welcome back to The Ben Heck Show. Karen, it looks like you've got one of those cool new portable mini arcades. Yeah, but they made the controls to scale, so they're really awkward, and you like make using the joystick is really weird. It works though, right? I mean, it is a real joystick. Yeah, it's a real game, and mm -hmm. it's a keychain. I'm not really sure why you would want to put that like in your pocket. Awfully big keychain. So maybe we can make it better. Oh yeah, kind of like the Oregon Trail project. Yeah. All right, let's take this apart, figure out how it works, see what's inside, and then shrink it down, just like we did with the Oregon Trail electronic game to actually get this into keychain sized range. It'll be like Pocket Pac-Man. Let's get started. Amazing hacks. Should we take it for a spin? Inspired designs. Imhotep's priests. Regrettable acting. No one seems to get it. Each week, Element 14's The Ben Heck Show brings you innovative projects using electronics, engineering, and more. can't resist taking apart these little pocket arcades. Let's see what's inside. Break down to 1979. This thing is actually pretty sturdily assembled. I mean, it only has two screws holding it in, but it has some tabs on the side here. Okay, lift up and out. There we go. Well, at first glance, we have a little wire going up here for the little animated lighted marquee. That's pretty cool. Um, looks like a flat flex ribbon cable down there. SDA, hey, that means something. That means serial data. It looks like they have a not populated surface mount capacitor and they have some through hole capacitors in its place. Well, let's keep going. Yeah, look at everything is screwed in place. You got a, a power switch that's screwed in place. That's, that's not too shabby. Oh, even the speaker is screwed in place. Oh, I think this is gonna be a sub assembly that comes out. So the speaker holder and the, and the power switch holder look to be cut of the same cloth. Yep, here they come. Yeah, this holds the power switch and holds the speaker in place. That's pretty efficient. Speaker should now pop out. Hmm, hey, this is the exact same speaker that was in the Oregon Trail game. I can tell by its weird green color and excess of holes. Has the power switch going to two different places. I wonder if that has to do with the try me mode. I've always wanted to try you, Dalton. I think I can take you. Oh, is this gonna have two LEDs for the marquee? Oh, that would be amazing. It does. Two surface mount LEDs. Oh, okay, well, so we have one big laptop and one SOIC 8. So this thing is already simpler than the Oregon Trail, probably because it doesn't save your progress. So I don't think we can give ourselves unlimited bullets and oxen and wagon. Holy smokes, he's a tune! That's interesting, look at that. A, B, C, D, and there's a resistor across only one of them. I wonder if this actually has a whole bunch of different games in it, and they're selected by that resistor. Yeah, it's a zero ohm resistor, so it's just acting as a jumper. Hey, should we see if changing this jumper changes the game? This thing's gonna be like, I don't know what I am. Who am I? Okay, D obviously is space invaders. Let's see what C is. Oh, there it does something. It's now Galaxian. Oh, you could put a, you could just put a selector switch on the back of this thing. Yeah, maybe we should do. I bet one of these is Pac-Man. Yeah, it probably just has like a little program at the boot. It checks the I/O to see which one is closed, and then it jumps to that part of the program. And now we've got Pac-Man. Okay, so D is Space Invaders. C was Galaga or Galaxian. B was Pac Person. What do you think A would be? If it's Qbert, Karen's gonna be like, ah! I wonder what happens if none of them are, oh, probably just defaults to the first. All right, let's try A. A is Mrs. Pac-Man. She has a bow on her head. Let's see what happens if, I'm guessing if none of them are selected, it'll just default to one of them. Oh wow, it gives, it gives us a message. Yes! MCU checks some, Flash checks some. Yes, it tells us things. Oh, this is great. <laughs> I 
I think I pretty much have this where I want it to be. Got all the parts in place. I made a little indentation for a charge jack right here. I've also uh, prepped some files in Adobe Illustrator. So what I'll do is I'll laser cut these pieces here so I have button templates and I'll just glue the buttons directly to it like I did with the Oregon Trail game. And then I will glue most of the parts into the case. So I was trying to fix my Google Pixel 1 and I was trying to get through the glue. So now I'm really pissed about glue. So it's like, you know what? I'm gonna glue some things together because if big companies can do it, why can't I? And there's a little indentation here for a piezo. It's not gonna give us the best sound, but there's no room for a transducer. This thing is just too small. Well, actually, yeah, yeah, here, see? 3D printed some uh, test pieces, so. Give me a little bitty arcade, a little bitty arcade. All right, so we should have everything. We'll have our little LiPo battery. We'll have our screen and our PCB. Oh crap, I forgot something. The selector switch. So the user can select which one of the four games that they play because you bought it, it's on the chip. So you should be able to play it. All right, so Felix did the uh, laser paint for this board. It was a little tricky because the slide switches are through hole and um, we don't have pads in the back. So I had to heat up their shafts with solder so they would connect to the pads on the, on the first surface. And of course we have the surface mount switches here for the directional controls. So I'm gonna just glue these in place. So I got the fire and select over here and then the uh, directional controls here. This is gonna be for the charge port. I glued the switch in place. I'll add some more hot glue later. We have a piezo speaker here. And then here's the front of it. Yeah, so I'm gonna glue this in place and then I'll check to see if all the circuitry will fit. It should, it's gonna be tight though, but I mean, we always knew it would be. Oh yeah, lots of glue. See, I can glue things together too. I have to put the battery in here now. You know, the battery that looks like a piece of Trident gum. So I put the little cell right there and then the buttons will still contact above it. So I need to get power to the switch and to the charging port. Gosh, there's not much room for anything inside this case. I gotta position this screen. Oh, that's not right. Oh, that's bad. Oh, that's not gonna pass muster. Oh no, it needs to go more that way. Oh man, it's tough. It's tough. I drew the screen into the computer and then spontaneously got a Southern accent. I could no more hurt a June bug. That's pretty good. See, when I turn it on, it flashes white. So I can see the borders and manually adjust it. I think I could live with that. So I'm gonna put a little bit of hot glue on it. Also, I have already have the keychain attached, but will it fit in girl pockets? Hashtag pockets. All right, I've wired the two to four encoder. It has the two lines coming off of the two switches. We've got power and ground connected. But before I continue, I better check and see if it still fits because I'm not sure if it's going to actually. These chips took up a lot of space. I'm a little concerned. I mean, the next step would be to wire the outputs of the inverter to the inputs of the game select. But yeah, is this even gonna fit together? Those chips, I think they're gonna run into the PCB. It seems like that is indeed happening. Okay, I reprinted the case. 0 0.080, last zero is pointless, inches thicker. Uh, I reprinted thicker versions of the buttons, but then I also tried just putting funky foam on the existing buttons, and I think that'll work just fine. Let's put those in place, cool. All right, let's fold it together. We should have plenty of room now. And actually uh, detach the screen from the main LCD. And the LCD can still lift up, but since it's got the um, thinner wires in it, it's better just to not, you know, not move it more than we have to because eventually they'll break. Whereas this flexible ribbon cable is meant to be flexible. Let's fold it together. All right, so we have the indexer in there now. So instead of having to buy an individual mini arcade or having to put a zero ohm resistor on the jumper to indicate what game you want to play, it's all hooked up to digital logic. Now there are probably uh, internal pull downs that have the switches at a normal state of zero volts. But now we've connected those to our circuitry. So we have a two to four encoder. So the two switches are basically a two bit number. 
Set the switches to zero to one, which gives you four choices, which allows you to choose one of the four games. And the demultiplexer basically outputs, uh, has four outputs. At any given time, only one is low, the rest are high. Of course, we need a high to indicate the game is active. So we put that through an inverter, and then we have a selectable reproduction of the game select resistor. Let's give it a shot. So let's go to Pac-Man, game two, turn it on, and we got Mrs. Pac-Man. There she is, Pac-Man's wife. Beauty. What's the difference between Pac-Man and Mrs. Pac-Man, really? Well, she has a bow on her head, and his regular Pac-Man. Now let's switch the game to space. Space one is Galaxian. Space two is Space Invaders. Start up the game, here we go. Actually, I should do Pac-Man, because then I can tell if the four-way joystick is working. So now the real question is, can you get a kill screen on this? Got a kill screen coming up. Billy Mitchell could keep this in his pocket and practice all the time. Uh-oh. No! That's my brother, the king of Different game. This is interesting. The original Space Invaders was black and white, and they had pieces of colored cellophane on the screen to make, like, the aliens white, the bases green, the flying saucer at the top red. And it looks like this uh, emulates that. See how my bullet goes from goes from uh, green to white to red. See if it goes all the way to the top, it's red. This game was the bomb back in the 70s. Whoa there, having some trouble with that portable game system? I am, it's so awkward to hold and try to play at the same time. The controls are so small, you can barely play the game. And look at this, this keychain would never fit in my pocket. What if I told you there was a better way? Really? Tell me more, Ben! It's the actual keychain sized version of that. That's right, it has a D-pad instead of a miniature joystick, so you can easily move in any direction you like. Up, down, left, right, you name it. And I just did. There's also two easy to access action buttons. But that's not all. It turns out the memory chip has all four games built into it, and they just put a jumper in at the factory to say which game it is and change the stickers. So since all four games are on that chip, you're probably legally entitled to it, just like on-disc DLC that video game companies release, like Activision. <laughs> wow! That's all we have for today. It was really fun taking apart and modifying a dedicated portable video game console. I remember these things from the 80s and the 90s. They were pretty cool. What were your favorites? Have you ever hacked one into something new? Tell us about it on the Element 14 community on element14.com forward slash TBHS. You can also go there to read about other upcoming episodes, builds, and special events. We'll see you next time. We can make like a whole arcade just for chimich... Ch no, don't Chinchillas, Chinch not chimichurris, I was gonna not chimichangas. Can you imagine Armadillo playing this? Mm. He'd be like, I have leprosy on my belly. I am Mexican Buzz Lightyear. Sitting on the dock of the slough. You're a toy! A Rackboard Game Boy. <laughs> that one's so dumb, it's awesome. She's got slobs of the biggest guys, and if they climb the tree. I'm a bull popcorn! Oh. <laughs> Shoot all over the TV! No, get, get Doctor Strange! That's good, but it's taken! Well, I was just organizing my collection of Z80 CPUs. I have some here that were made as recently as 2016. There's a guy online, Grant Surley, I found his website. He's got these plans for making really simple, a single board Z80 basic computers. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I think it might be cool to download one of his designs and wire it up by hand in super solder macro mode. One last super solder episode.